The Flower Devil by Clark Ashton Smith Narrated by Matthew Schmitz In a basin of porphyry, at the summit of a pillar of serpentine, the thing has existed from primeval time in the garden of the kings that rule an equatorial realm of the planet Saturn. With black foliage, fine and intricate as the web of some enormous spider, with petals of livid rose and purple like the purple of putrefying flesh, and a stem rising like a swart and hairy wrist from a bulb so old, so encrusted with the growth of centuries that it resembles an urn of stone. The monstrous flower holds dominion over all the garden. In this flower, from the years of oldest legend, an evil demon has dwelt, a demon whose name and whose nativity are known to the superior magicians and mysteriarchs of the kingdom, but to none other. Over the half-animate flowers, the ophidian orchids that coil and sting, the bat-like lilies that open their ribbed petals by night and fasten with tiny yellow teeth on the bodies of sleeping dragonflies, the carnivorous cacti that yawn with green lips beneath their beards of poisonous yellow prickles, the plants that palpitate like hearts, the blossoms that pant with the breath of poisonous perfume. Over all these, the flower devil is supreme in its malign immortality and evil, perverse intelligence, inciting them to strange maleficence, fantastic mischief, even to acts of rebellion against the gardeners, who proceed about their duties with wariness and trepidation, since more than one of them has been bitten, even unto death, by some vicious and vinific flower. In places, the garden has run wild from lack of care on the part of the fearful gardeners, and has become a monstrous tangle of serpentine creepers and hydra-headed plants, convolved and interwriting in lethal hate or venomous love, and horrible as a rout of wrangling vipers and pythons. And, like his innumerable ancestors before him, the king dares not destroy the flower for fear that the devil, driven from its habitation, might seek a new home and enter into the brain or body of one of the king's subjects, or even the heart of his fairest and gentlest and most beloved queen.